clowns. Some of you are the most fearsome scoundrels and cutthroats the world has seen. I know that some of you are fierce warriors, uh, and yet some of you couldn't fight your way out of a flimsy paper bag. I can see in some of you that look of fear. Like once caged beasts, you are fleeing from something, some horrible unnamed secret or some unspeakable crime you once committed. I can see it in your eyes, like some frightened bunny rabbit. A few of you are creatures of honor, and yet others of you are simply lost. Your aimless wanderings bringing you to this hellish place. You approach it with profound confusion. How did I get here? What are the answers? Well, I have your answers. I have answers for the lot of you. From this moment on, you are beasts of duty. Duty to your master, duty to me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vermin Pierre Croc. I am the commander of this garrison of the French Foreign Legion. You shall refer to me as Le Commandant. The uh, punishment here is swift and severe, and I challenge you to defy me, and I defy you to challenge me. And now, Captain Poulet. Merci, mon commandant. From now on, starting today, you poor devils are under the thumb of moi, Capitaine Poulet. And of course, the iron fist of Commandant Vermont Picroc. Your past is forgotten here in the Legion. You are nothing. Time to you has stopped. Aha, now it has begun again. Beginning maintenant, you are worms. Worms crawling in the ground. You are fresh born babies. You are little reptiles waiting, praying to grow hair and walk on hind legs. You are the lowest point in a beautiful pyramid. Do not look up. Do not look up at me up here. You will burn up your eyeballs. Just look straight ahead and do your work. Just do what we tell you to from up here and do it good. If all goes well, one day you will join us. You will be the eagles flying above the desert. You will look down upon your prey and you will grab it with your talons. You will have to work and work and work. Because let me tell you a secret. An eagle is just a worm with muscles. When I am done with you, you will say, Capitaine Poulet, you have made me into a worm with muscles. It is a beautiful struggle you have ahead of you. And now is where you begin paying in sweat. We begin immediately. A few of you will be leaving Fort Croclandia with Captain Lefleur for a routine patrol. This desert is full of jackals. The rest of you will stay here. Bienvenue, worms, to time. Avez-vous l'heure? Ha <laughs> oui, vous avez l'heure. Welcome to the Legion, Capitaine Lefleur. Your orders. Merci, Captain Poulet. All right. These are the person who are coming with me. Line up in an orderly fashion right here. All right, come on, you scumbags. Get into line. Get in now. Go, go. Beat them. All right, uh, attention! Un, deux, go! 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 Your greasy drop of sweat hanging from a jackal's damp off covered ball sack. Yeah, I'll coat your body in my own excrement and I'll throw you to the swine, who are brothers and sisters anyway. Your slimy tail lynching out of a monkey's wet, wrinkled butthole. Et puis, tu le manges. Yeah, I'll cut off your narrow little manhood and I'll let it harden and I'll use it for a salt shaker. And every time I flavor my food, you'll be in excruciating pain. I would not fuck you if you are my dog. Vermin Peacock, you're a thieving, rotten, low-down, son of a yellow-bellied jackal who's afraid of me halfway. Sir, the reporters are here. What shall I tell them? Tell them today's peace talks went exceptionally well. Eh, bite! Mais Nietzsche a une très, très grande moustache. Vous avez raison. Mais Sartre, pas de moustache. Ah, mais bien sûr, vous l'êtes. Bien sûr. On the new man, sir. We suspect he might be the restroom robber. We'll put a stop to that. Lock all the restrooms. What will the men do, sir? They'll tiptoe after <coughs> the first three days.
Good morning, sir. Would you like my idea on how to solve the energy crisis? Ow! Ah! Oh! Why am I treated with so little respect? Some people are leaders, figurewits, and some people are doormats. You are a doormat, and don't ever forget it. Another day, another insult, another humiliation, another defeat, another dashed hope, another setback, another unachieved goal. And Monday is my good day. How plentiful is the food supply for it? The, the men have been eating dog food for the past year, sir. Have you noticed any difference? Uh, only in your box, sir. Is there anything else for I missed 14 no-shows for your speech yesterday. Have I forgotten anything? Uh, they're next of kin. Intelligence says Pretty Boy is going to rustle our goat house tonight. I am one step ahead of him. I hid the goats in Maggot's room. And what about this man? So far, only three goats have checked out. I'll teach that scum. He can't cut off our oil. Uh, what's all the commotion outside? The men are molding a statue in your likeness, Sir Commandant. Uh, to which group do I have this on him? Uh, the Stavne detail. They are protesting on behalf of a Jews schmies. They could riot at any moment. Yeah, let's see if can. Hey guys, Twinkies and milk in the Commandant's office. Rouge, Boulet. We must deal with schmies. If putting him in the iron box hasn't caused his pernicious influence on the troops, nothing but that will do the trick. I want you to, you to schedule an execution for schmies this week. <laughs> I'll try to recommend, Sir Commandant. One law for the ox and the lamb is not partial. What are you in for? I got so hungry I stole Croc's horse and ate the whole thing. How'd they trap you? With a huge Alka-Seltzer tablet. Has anybody ever escaped from here? One guy actually trued his way through the iron bars, but Croc caught him a week later. How'd they pick up his trail? They followed the baby food jars. <laughs> Over here, forts over here, goats over here, 
I, I'm sick of it. Yeah. I'm just sick of it. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, but listen. Croc's world's gonna end. Either the embargo's gonna work, or the word of Nebuchadnezzar will finally catch up with him. Yes. Yeah. His world's coming to an end. And this fort's gonna be our museum. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, well said. Hey, but here comes Flossie now. Let's see what our little desert blossom has to say about your generous offer. <laughs> huh. Flossie, Ojardis Shepherd has offered two mountain goats for your hand in marriage. Two? Actually, 
They just amputated her hands, but she was so pissed. She like went around with a knife and was actually like cutting off balls. She really was doing it. I mean, Flossie threatens to cut my dick off. She a veterinarian? This girl. This girl is serious. Today you have suffered from degradation and starvation. Starting tomorrow, that is going to change. <laughs> to humiliation and untold agonies. Oh. Yes, fails. All right, come on. Yeah, let's see here. Hey, baby. Your place and mine around eight o'clock. Both. Both. I do not know. I think the more Schmitz's response would index this spectacle as both a technology of discipline, shaping their bodies, and also it is social relationship, albeit one of the enormous blind spots. Hmm, I see what you mean. Hey, you see maggot? I know why you fucking intellectuals have your noses in there. You wanna know? You wanna know why? Because I've been leaning down and farting in your face. The way I read Schmitz's system is far more punishing than that. I don't even think it imagines liberation. Ah, but that's where liberation enters. It's the work of the negative. It's precisely where Schmitz's repression of the utopian that creates his radical potential is exquisite. Schmitz middling, that man doesn't mean shit to me. Have you seen Maggot, that little cutie Maggot? Yeah, Flossie, I saw him playing in the garbage over there. And believe me, it's hard to tell the trash from the trash. <laughs> All right. I've dug the perfect hole, finally. I could win the Nobel Prize as a or Grammy, or, or, or. And Maggot, when you finish cleaning out the garbage hole, you can clean the goat pen. That's the trouble with being cross trained. Oh, there you are, Maggot Cutie Pie. Hey, why don't you quit this lousy job anyway? What do you got to lose? My employee discount on those plugs. I hear you're looking for a husband. That's a silly rumor. Can you imagine this great body up for grabs from hundreds of men? Why not? There's enough grabs for everyone. Oh, Maggot, you are cutie pie. Hey, what's that you got down there? Is that a family picture? That must be your favorite family picture. Where are you? I don't see you. I'm underwater. Oh, baby, is that the same daddy you had when we were a little maggot? I can't believe your father abandoned you in a supermarket. Did he ever come back? Just to mark me down. You know what I heard? Is it true I heard you was asked to the dance on Saturday night? Where did you hear that? In the six o'clock news. It is true, maggot. Your friend over there just invited me to the Cactus Fiesta. See ya. Oh, 
mighty Nebuchadnezzar, I need profound advice on a matter which has caused me much worry and anxiety. The ageless wisdom of the eternal sand are at your disposal. For the last ten years, I've led this evil, depraved life of boozing it up, gambling, and degeneracy. Are you asking for forgiveness? No, I'm asking for a second win. I see now that all my boozing it up and gambling has been out of hatred for Croc. I wish to erase him from the desert's memory, so we may learn finally to love. Only the master's tool can dismantle the plantation. I see. And what is Croc's greatest tool but his infernal iron fist? Precisely, pretty boy. How then, mighty Nebuchadnezzar, might I turn his fist against him? How might I turn his despotic powers towards the righteous cause of freedom on all sides? Tonight at the Cactus Fiesta, my son, the one you took to be swine will prove your most indispensable ally. Use his magic to locate the one known as Shemiz, and together the three of you will execute a most devious plan. Oh, great one, you speak in riddles. No, no not, not really. really. Thank you, mighty one. I will remember your words. We have been wandering in this desert for what seems like an eternity. Swanson and Pino have never returned from their scouting duties. We have yet to encounter the enemy, although I suspect they have something to do with the disappearance of those two. Our supplies are dwindling. Carpentier and Lyon have come down with sunstroke and severe chapping of the lips which we are treating with liberal applications of Van de Soule. Despite all this, Mohar remains high, and Alvin estimates our compass, uh, I mean our binoculars, will be working again in a couple of days. Are you ready? Captain, I believe the troops are getting fatigued. I believe we should set up camp right away. Très bien. Have them set up camp on this raid. Did you unite? Yes. And Lieutenant, is there anything? Well, Captain, off the record. What? I'm afraid our troops are getting worried. They are rather young. Gaston, how long have you served the unmarked man? It's been a long time, Captain. Well, and have I ever given you any reason to do to my ability? Well, Captain, there was that one time in Oran when the entire pat patrol was lost in a dust devil. Then there was the time in Benghazi when you lost half the patrol and it's in the camel stand. Lieutenant, we all and make mistakes. And in Tunis, you brought that ship into prison day. We all make mistakes, Lieutenant, even you. Even you, Captain. and Lieutenant, those camps were pretty fast.
your uh, boyfriend, Maggot, over there? No, no, he's not my boyfriend, but that's Maggot, all right. Yeah. So you maybe can introduce us. What tricks? You gonna hop him? What fun? You keep the secret, Flossy. <sighs> what the hell kind of question is that? Of course I can keep a motherfucking secret. What do you think I am, some kind of sissy? I was wondering, maybe, uh, Maggot would dig a hole for me to jewel Schmees. <sighs> what the hell do you want to do that for? That's stupid. Well, I'll tell you. I was talking to the almighty Nebuchadnezzar himself. He told me that Schmees knows something about Croc's iron fist. Who cares that Croc's ugly ass iron fist anyhow? Well, I do. I'm gonna take Croc's iron fist, then I'm gonna smash Croc, and I'm gonna turn the tables for once and all. Why did he say you wanted to kill Croc? Dick cheese, dick cheese, dick cheese. You know killing Croc's the only thing I live for. I'm gonna go get that sexy little maggot boy right after I piss. Yeah. 
Rock's iron fist. I'm thinking if we can get to Shmi's. Same day to him. We'll be that much closer to squashing Croc's head like the beetle dog in its hole. What kind of stupid plan is that? That's not even a plan. I mean, I thought I wanted to fuck up Croc and not go play in the dirt. I mean, you want to get the fist, then you don't even know what to do with it. I thought you'd finally get the tits to move on Croc, pretty boy, but now I see that you're just a little crying baby. I can't believe I ever thought that you, my brother, were a real warrior. Get the fist, and he doesn't even know what to do with it. What a load of shit. Chill out. I'm talking about divine plan here from the almighty Nebuchadnezzar himself. See, once we get Croc's iron fist, we'll be that much closer to having all of Croc's power, having all of Croc's secrets, having all of his softball, all of his profile. I'm talking the game will be ours, man. Are you with me, comrade, brother, man? I don't know. Yeah. Think quick. Shmeese is going to be dead in a week. This is a load of crap all This is KROK, I'm Randy Rantoda, and that was the Cosmic Visionaries, with Old Thirsty the Legionnaire off their latest album, Return to Boggy Creek. If you missed the uh, Visionaries show last night at Cactus Fiesta, I pity you, man, because they crocked the house. And Faultline were some foot stompers, too. So, check them out, check it in. One lucky fan of Mr. Figowitz gave KROK's The Phrase That Pays, Quench the Camel, and won himself a one-way. What the hell? Okay, hold on a minute here. Okay, one lucky fan of Mr. Figowitz gave KROK's Quench the Camel the phrase that pays and won himself a one-way ticket to Croc's own chateau in Crocasia, deep in the salt mines. Kudos, Figowitz. Remember to pack that lip balm. So if Quench the Camel asks you for a drink sometime, remember, the phrase that pays is keep on crocking in the free world. So, KROK just keeps giving till it hurts. During that 45-minute music marathon, one Ojar the Shepherd heard the magic gunshots and won himself two free tickets to this weekend's execution of that dastardly turncoat, Jules Schmies the terrorist, who's now festering in Croc's iron jail box. Way to go, Ojar. KROK is proud to be a sponsor of Sunday's execution. We'll be giving away tickets all day, so uh, keep your ears open for the gunfire could come any time. <laughs> be the tenth caller and you'll be there, man, in the front row at the event of the year. Don't say we don't love you because we do. All right, speaking of uh, the execution, Big B.A. will be on tonight at uh, Croc Talk and he'll be taking calls about the execution. Does Jules Schmies deserve to be shot? 
or should he die a slower and more painful death? We want to hear your opinion. And that's what Croc Talk's all about. Your voice, unedited, uncensored, unexcavated. Oops. Unexcavated. What the hell? Unexpurgated and raw. So uh, get thinking. Put that cap in his ass, or should we chop off his limbs one by one? It's going to be a mild show. It's going to be a wild show. Tune in. So after a little news break with uh, Sugar Spice Land, we'll be back with more rock. But first, an update with Moses Adams. Thank you. I'm Randy Rantuda. I'm Moses Adams. And I'm Sugar Spiceland. Topping today's news, the standoff at Pretty Boy's tent is entering its 50th day, still with no settlement in sight. In related news, the anti-croc minions of Pretty Boy have been massing across the border in blatant violation of the peace process. In sporting news, the Nebuchadnezzars topped the hyenas 7-9, and the jackals whiffed the pythons by a whopping 17-4. Weather through the weekend, hot and dry with occasional dust devils. I'm Moses Adams. And I'm Sugar Spiceland with KROK News. Thank <laughs> you. 
our hearts of food. Maybe that celebration birthday feast we had for Alvin's birthday wasn't such a great idea. At least we have some water left. If Alvin's latest calculations are correct, we'd all be good 1,200 miles from the fort. The men seem a bit concerned, but then they remember they are under my expert command, and things don't seem so helpless. I already tried some. It's delicious. Good work, Alvin. It appears to be some kind of tiny cactus. Good work, Alvin. Go make some delicious stew from the new cactus. No, no, no. Screw this stew. Let's eat now. Okay. Go on, Alvin.
and I want to thank you for having me on. I yeah. really enjoyed this. I appreciate lot. you bringing me here. Um, so this is it. As far as we're concerned, I think and hope this is the end of the line. All Let's right. see. Greetings, maggot. Greetings, pretty boy. I've been expecting you. My name is Jules Schmies. Yes, the story of Vermin and I goes way back. Back to our days behind the barricades together in Paris, that infamous spring. I was a promising young engineering student. He, a brilliant student of philosophy. Even then, Vermin had an edge to him. A certain cynicism that I shared and which drew us together. The two of us early on recognized in each other a shared mm, vision, perhaps. Unlike some of the, our more, mm, how should we say, our more wishful compatriots in the commune. We knew we weren't going to change the world, unlike them. We simply felt as if history demanded of us a certain petulance. So we overturned cars, spray-painted walls, befriended the working class like everyone else. It was fun, you know. We felt like real cowboys, real gangsters, but better, one step above even, until one fateful evening, though, in the last few days of May, after the galleries had been turned out onto the streets, when disaster befell our little ironic tryst with revolution. During a riot that day to liberate blue from the tricolor, a faulty Molotov cocktail exploded in Berman's hand, leaving but a smoldering, pulverized stump. I almost panicked at first, but rapidly regained my composure. From the depths of my irony, I actually believed that I could rebuild my dear friend's demolished hand. My greatest challenge, I smirked to myself. Nothing more than an unfinished joke. Such was my fantasy of control, distance, that I attributed myself to the power of miraculous healing. Quickly, I searched the littered streets for remnants of a shattered hand, a shred of bone here, a tendon there, a stray knuckle, something to structure the cybernetic experiment I was about to undertake. I must have accidentally picked up a pebble or a bolt or a wire, something not of his hand, I still don't know what, that polluted the integrity of my model, for little did I know the monstrosity I would create. Follow me, comrades. Das Material, aus dem die Faust hergestellt ist, ist so ungemein stark, dass es sogar einen Druck von 40.000 Kilopascal ausdehnen kann. Verschiedene Wissenschaftler haben an dem Projekt gearbeitet. Jules Schmies ist der Gruppenleiter. Er studierte an der Technischen Universität in Leipzig.
Heinz Schneider ist der technische Direktor des Projektes und studierte an der Universität Bremen. Spezialist in Metallfragen war Matthias Feuer. Er studierte an der Genfer Universität. Testtechniker waren Gerd Haag und Melanie Nebauer. Es dauerte ungefähr zwei Jahre, um alle Testuntersuchungen zu beenden. Das gesamte Projekt basiert auf Antimaterie. Dies ist das erste erfolgreiche Projekt in dieser Richtung. Und hier nochmal eine Demonstration der gesamten Stärke der eisernen Faust. Stride, though. What choice did he have, really? Soon after, about the time Godard forsook his Maoism, we convinced ourselves that history had come to an end in Paris, that the great story of our generation had come to an inelegant close. We rationalized that to remain there would have been to live past ourselves. Quelle folie! So we decided to move here, where history seemed to continue unabated, and where our cynical youth could replenish itself limitlessly. Perhaps more so, however, we recognize that even among our most lunatic, liberated friends, a gaze that would always linger on the metallic folds, the bulbous contours of Vermin's robot hand. Perhaps in truth, we wish to go where Vermin's grotesque deformity would not resonate discordantly against a whole tradition of classical proportions and single-point perspective. We hoped, secretly, that his hand might be absorbed into the pulsing arabesques, the labyrinthine cursives of these more southern latitudes. We left in order to forget, to break a promise that we had never made. Of course, that was not to be the case. Our original plan had been to join the Foreign Legion simply for the free passage south. That and the shock it would administer to our former student friends. We scoffed at their derision. But upon our arrival, we found it exceedingly difficult to escape. Try as we might to make contacts, to forget ourselves, forget Paris. It was much harder than either of us had imagined. No matter where we went, how far we deserted, The fort seemed to loom on the horizon like the moon, and even on those rare occasions when we did lose sight of the fort, when we felt just on the verge of escape, there was always Vermin's hand to remind us, and the natives, that we belonged elsewhere. It was after a few such failures that I first noticed Vermin's hand beginning to curl into a fist. It was a gradual thing, as was our estrangement. The powers I had implanted into the hand helped him rise through the ranks, and by the time Vermin was promoted to captain, Both his fist and our friendship stood completed, irreversible. When Croc finally became commandant, I began my life in the box here, incarcerated for unwritten and thus all the more grievous crimes against civilization. But I can't complain. I have plenty of agents on the outside, keeping me abreast of things. I help plan parties, food drives, uprisings. It's just my body that can't go outside. Until tomorrow, anyway. I know, I know, it probably sounds like a living death in here unseen, forgotten, disappeared. But it had always been more than that. I swear, hidden from sight, buried away, I have known ecstasy every day. I have been allowed to love and destroy with each breath, undivided, the same. And that curdles my cheese. That gives me a plan. Okay, here's the plan, fellas. The execution will take place at the fort. Schmies, you will be at post A. Croc, will be seated here, in the gallery. I will be seated next to Croc. Maggot, you will dig a hole over to post A. Schmies, you will jump in the hole. I will grab Croc's fist. In the ensuing confusion, shoot Croc, then jump into the hole, fire another cannon blast, thus sealing the hole, and we will make our escape. Sound good? I don't think you've understood anything I said, Mr. Pretty Boy, but since you've called upon me, I must act. I didn't understand anything that either of you said, but digging a hole sounds good to me. Ha 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 ha! Those fools!
présente son éminence désagréable, Vermont Pierre Croc. everything. You know nothing of Hawk. Hawk is your master. And you, Schmies, are a bug to Hawk. And you, Maggot, are Hawk's bug as well. And you, Pretty Boy, Hawk's bug. Men, put Pretty Boy next to Schmies over there. greatest moment. Now it is as if Kark is come down upon the universe from a, from a divine giant cloud to come down and crush everything. And Kark feels so close, so close to the Legion, to the world. It is all right here, Schmies, pretty boy. Kark has never felt so close to you as he does today. Kark is inside you. Feel Kark inside you. Growing the way Kark grows is nothing so much as Kark himself. Ah, the hawk inside you is calling out to hawk. Join with me, hawk. Free me from these not hawks. Yes, hawk. Hawk feels you. Come to hawk. Hawky, hawky, hawk. Hawk is your most noble hawk. And now, as hawk heals you, hawk returns onto hawk. Hawk becomes hawk onto himself. Hawk is hawk, and yet nothing remains. Poulet. You must be the hand of Cock. You must execute Cock's will and kill Jules Smith. And you must do it now. Firing squad, assume your positions at firing post B. What have we here? Shut up, you fucking colonial thing nut! I have no time for your puny, weak insults. Shut up, Puckerbot. We're taking you down. I've had enough of your shit, and I'm not the only one who's sick of it. Look at all these girls. Look at my cat crew. I disappeared into their beautiful faces. You know, Croc... You stand not a chance against this fist. Look at this fist! You know, Croc, you can sit in your fucking floor all day long thinking that you're getting bigger and bigger, but I'll something you dead pot you can suck shit you can scorn shit you can eat our pain up like it's your own but you'll never be bigger than me because i'm keeping it real hit it girl come on see 